Zach Shum here with the Utah Plant Pest Diagnostic Lab. The Utah Plant Pest Diagnostic Lab, or UPPDL, is a service of Utah State University Extension and the Department of Biology at USU. We have entomology and plant pathology specialists to diagnose plant pests of arthropod or disease origin. In this video, we'll be talking to you about how to properly collect and submit a sample to send to the diagnostic lab for testing. What we'd like you to do is to take a photo from far away so we can get an entire perspective of the plant and then get some closer up photos so we can see a little bit more detail on the leaves and on any symptomatic tissues on the plant. Then it is okay to collect that sample. So you want to collect any symptomatic tissues. So in this case, since we have a really large leaf here, I'm just going to prune off that one leaf and I'm going to place it directly into a plastic bag. You do not want to add any wet paper towels or any other moisture to this bag. As long as this is shipped quickly to the diagnostic lab, the leaf will arrive in perfect condition for us to test. For insects, you want to be sure that you're using something that will gather the insect without it potentially biting or stinging you in case you are collecting a biting or stinging insect. So here we have an insect that I am curious about inside the squash flower. So I'm going to use this vial because it looks like some type of bee and I'm going to gently get it into the vial so that it cannot sting me in the process. And I've collected it into this container and now it is safe to be transported elsewhere or sent. In this particular case, we do not need to submit this bee anywhere because we know that bees are helpful. So I'm just going to release him back onto the flower in this case. So sometimes the plant is too large to collect the entire sample. So you want to get a good representative sample from that particular plant. So in this particular case, we're gonna take another photograph from far away so we can see how that plant is situated in the landscape. And then we'll take a couple of closer up photos too so we can see the symptoms on the tree a little bit better. Then we can again collect this sample. In this particular case, I'm just going to prune off the tips of a branch or two and we're gonna place them right in a Ziploc bag so it can be shipped to the diagnostic lab. If there are any other exposed areas of the tree, such as roots, or if it is a fruit tree, the fruits, you can also collect those different types of tissues as well for submission. So here we have a plant sample that came in that was not packaged or shipped properly. So the material of the plant is not in a bag. The leaves are very dried up and crispy. We cannot do anything with this to run a diagnostic test. This sample is way too far gone. We need to see samples that are in better shape. In this particular box, however, we have some nice packaging to compress and hold the plant steady. If we open this up, the plant material is dry, but it's still living. It is inside plastic bags that are sealed. There's no excess moisture. This is a really good sample to be submitted to the diagnostic lab. We can run diagnostic tests on this plant, no problem, even though the plant is starting to get some dieback symptoms. If a plant is very large, and you can't fit it inside Ziploc bags, trash bags, or another large bag is okay. You just want to make sure there's not excess moisture in the bag. Uh, we can see some moisture that is built up in this bag. That is okay and expected for a very large sample. However, you would want to make sure that this is shipped overnight to the diagnostic lab as it's sitting in the lab or sitting in the mail for long periods of time can damage the sample to the point where it gets moldy or rotten and we can no longer test it. So when you collect an insect outside and you have it in a container, the best thing to do to kill it or the most humane and easiest way to kill it is to just simply put it in your home freezer. If you put it in a home freezer and sit it in there for about 24 hours, it will be killed and then you can either submit it dead in a container with paper towel or you can then put it in a container with ethanol or rubbing alcohol. So for insect samples, we need to make sure that the insect is sent to us in a safe manner so it doesn't arrive completely damaged. If an insect arrives damaged, it's really hard to get diagnosis or identifications on those insects. That is because when we put insects under the microscope, we often need to look at microscopic features such as hairs or their feet or what we call tarsi. So this is an example of a poorly sent in cicada sample. So as we can see, there's a little leg of this cicada that broke off and is sitting on the side. If this was in a shipping container, it would fly around, 
get broken, and that could impact our ability to identify that insect, especially if the insect is quite small and otherwise nondescript. The two ways that we prefer for you to send in insect samples are one, to place the insect in a vial or a container that is watertight with rubbing alcohol or ethanol. This is an example of a good submission where the insect is inside ethanol and we put enough ethanol in there to just cover the insect. Certainly this insect is floating. Most insects when they're freshly collected will sink to the bottom of the vial or container. So that is one way that you can do it. The other way that you can do it with if you don't have rubbing alcohol or a watertight container available is to gently compress that insect inside paper towel or tissue or some other type of paper product. We don't want to smush the insect. We want to create a small bed of paper material and gently place another paper towel or material on top of it so that the insect can't jostle around in the mail. Seal that container and then put it in a padded mailing container or envelope for shipping. So here we have an insect that we want to get identified by the diagnostic lab. So we are going to take a container, something like a medicine bottle or another watertight container will work. You can fill that with ethanol or store-bought rubbing alcohol just from your local drugstore. And you don't want to completely fill the container unless you have a very large insect. You want just enough ethanol to cover the body of the insect. If this were a fresh, recently dead insect, it would sink usually to the bottom. It's kind of what we're looking for. Then you can just seal that container and you can place it in a bag. Anytime you submit samples that have uh, liquid in the container, we recommend to wrap that container or wrap that vial in paper towels a few times, just in case there are any leaks. Place that in a sealed zip bag. And then you can place that bag in a mailing container to ship to the diagnostic lab. And that's it for submitting a sample to the UPPDL for diagnosis. If you have any questions about submitting a sample or any of our services, please contact us by phone or via email. We also have an online form that you can fill out that is found on the main page of our website. There, you can upload photos and tell us more about your plant pest related issues and we can reply via email and suggest sample submission if necessary.